Uh, as always, it's a pleasure, Liam Beckett here, you know, a man that's uh, famed for his hairstyle and his opinions on local football. Liam, uh, great to have you. Local football this season, the Irish League, your reflections so far? Yeah, a couple of, a couple of interesting things, Adrian. At the top, not a great deal of difference. Crusaders leading, uh, Linfield second. Uh, what's impressed me has been the form of the uh, provincial clubs, in particular Corey and Ballymena and Glenavon. And to be honest, Ballymena, after having a 6 0 hammer in the very first day of the season, have really come good and have shown great form. A uh, couple of mishaps along the way, but uh, they're up to this top six. They haven't been there for a long time. I think they'll finish in the top six. Yeah, I think I've been impressed by the provincial clubs. Interesting too that, certainly with regard to Balamina, there was talk and rumour and speculation, even in the early days, where people were saying, you know, would David Jeffrey even last at the, the showgrounds? And look what he's done. Of course, and you know, he's, he, he, he hasn't went out and signed big name players. A lot of people thought, ah, they'll bring David Jeffrey. He'll need a checkbook because when he was at Linfield, they have the big checkbook. That was never really the case as well. I know some players, when David Jeffrey was winning the, those major trophies at Linfield, that only signed for Linfield, not because they were getting more money. They were actually getting offered more money elsewhere. But they went there because of him. They went there because of the status of the club and that there was always a great chance they would win major trophies and get to Europe and so on. All the trimmings that comes with success. Uh, and he's proven that going to Ballymena United. He's went there on a strict budget. Uh, they don't overspend at Ballymena United. They, no they run a good there, tight shop. They're tight, you know that. And, <laughs> and the club's no different. The club, the club runs the, the way a club should be run. It runs in the black. Uh, I don't know how much in the black, and it's none of my business, but I know they run a good tight ship. David has come in under the, that, uh, the, those guidelines and has signed players at the beginning of the season. I knew it needed major surgery. He has uh, signed players from the championship and he has signed players who perhaps weren't first team choice at other clubs and they've come good for him. And I put that down to good man management on his part and obviously now he's taken them into the top six. The crowd's re a real buzz around Balamina. They're all excited to see uh, good times ahead. So do I. I. I don't necessarily say that team will take them to the championship uh, to win the championship, I think that takes them to the next phase and then he'll strengthen again and he'll keep doing that till he gets a team worthy of one in the Irish League title. Well done. We have talked in the past about teams like Coleraine that have struggled uh, under Oren Kearney and uh, they've kept faith with him and uh, they've been proven to be correct to keep faith with him because he always was a quality manager. Now the players are beginning to deliver. Again, yeah. Again, he's working on a quite restricted budget down there. Uh, and what I like about Coleraine at the minute, under the Oren Kearney uh, leadership, they have introduced a lot of local lads uh, that I know from around that area. That's always good for generating interest among the fans as well. If you want to keep the fans interested, as you can remember back when we had the good old team at Coleraine in the 70s, an awful lot of that team consisted of players. Now, steady, Liam. That's a long, long way away, <laughs> that one. You know, you... Black and white TV. I know stage, that. You know? Oh, I know that. And, <laughs> and uh, flared trousers and all the rest of it. Uh, but you remember it as well as I do. But an awful lot of that Korean team consisted of local players, and there was a great general interest among the locals. And then we lost that for a while. Uh, and Oren has got that back again. There's at least half a dozen players in the Korean first team at the minute who are a stone's throw from the showgrounds in Korean. That always generates interest. And I honestly do think that when you get local lads playing for their local team, uh, there's an identity back with the club. And, and he's got that. Uh, introducing a lot of youth as well, bringing them through nicely. So, yeah, I see progress at Korean and, and that pleases me because I'm a country man and I love to see the country teams doing well. Uh, but you look at the Crusaders and the Linfields, it's obviously we're a wee bit away yet, but we're not that far away. You talk about country teams, and of course I would have an affinity with Dungannon, but I want to lump in the likes of Ards as well because I've seen them play a lot throughout the season. Both those teams like to play football under their management. They do. They like to play football. They're good to watch. They do because Rodney McAree, that's the way he likes to do it at Dungannon. Uh, great name at Dungannon, the McAree family. They've been, uh, they're, they're steeped in Dungannon uh, tradition and history. Uh, and I think that was a great appointment making Rodney McAree manager. He likes to get the ball down and pass it. They have a good surface at Strangmore Park for doing that. Ards, 
also deserve tremendous credit because under Niall Curry, they have been nomads for countless years, mm -hmm. ever since the great, great surface that used to exist at Castlereagh Park and Arch. They lost that ground. They've never really got a home to call their own. I, th uh, their own. I think that's an absolute cry and shame. Uh, they're always playing every game away from home. You know, you can say that Bangor's now their home. That's not their home. Mm -hmm. They're called Ards because they're from Ards. And, and they need an identity sooner rather than later. And I think all the more credit must go to Niall Curry because, you know, he has got them back into the Premiership. Uh, he's got them performing reasonably well at Premiership level, mid table roughly. Uh, and to do that, playing every game, in my opinion, away from home, is a tremendous achievement. I want to talk to you about one of the uh, the big teams who have struggled, but uh, under their new boss now seem to have turned a corner slightly anyway and, and may continue to do that in the future. Glenn Torn, and I see you had a pop there in your Sunday Life column to you about Nacho Novo. He must have been listening because he scored a clicker goal there recently for the Glens. He's now... Uh, begun to to hit the scoring charts. Who knows what'll happen <coughs> there? But yeah. Glen Torn on on under Gary Heverin uh, is shaping up well. I've yes. seen them; they're playing good foot. Yeah, I Gary Heverin's a, a young uh, aspiring manager. He wants to do well. He's very committed. Uh, he, he he's he's very enthusiastic, and I think he's probably the best choice of what was available that Glen Torn got. Uh, I was sad in many ways to see Alan Kernahan going, but because he impressed me. Uh, now, obviously, it didn't work under him. I thought they were getting worse instead of better, which surprised me because I thought he had all the credentials to make a good manager. Glenn Turner, a big, big club, Adrian. And, and, mm. and it's, I think it saddens even the neutrals to see them down where they're at in the, in the bottom regions of the Irish League. Uh, they've now replaced Alan Kernahan with Gary Haveran, uh, and I, I think he'll do a good job. Now, the thing about Nacho Novo, uh, yes, I did have a pop in my Sunday Life column and I felt justified, and I stand by it. Uh, he was unfit. Uh, the man's quality is never in question. But you know, those are, you can't keep looking back and reminiscing about how good he was. Glen Torn fans want to see how good he is. Mm -hmm. And to date, in my opinion, he hasn't produced the goods. He's been unfit. He's been overweight, in my opinion. And I think in, uh, for the return of what he's cost in the club, I think it's been poor. I think Glen Torn have been shortchanged. I'm not a bit backward to say that. And I think he needs to either get fit, get interested, or get out, some of them three. Interesting, you know, Glen Torn have been struggling, you know, and they were changing managers and things weren't going well for them. And yet, uh, I, I covered them recently for BBC whenever they were down at Dungannon. They bought a big crowd with them. You know, the fans are still staying loyal. Yeah. And the players were applauded off the park at the end. They've gone on listening to get other results as well. So the fan base is still there, as you say, they're a massive club. Oh, the pride of East Belfast, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, when I was growing up and when you were growing up in football, that was always they talked about the big two, and that was Linfield and Glen Torn. Linfield's still up there, Glen Torn lost their way. And that saddens me because there was always an air of uh, wanting to go and play at the Oval. It was a great arena, big, big crowds. Sadly, the, the stadium has become dilapidated. They're badly in need of a new ground. Pitch. I would love to see them staying in the original site but have it completely uh, overhauled and the club and the team and everything seem to just fall apart. I think they're starting to see signs of it maybe being resurrected. I hope they do. We need a strong Glen Torn in the Irish League. There's a magical ring about their name. I think Havran's the lad that will probably take them forward and, and I just hope they do because as I say we need a strong Glen Torn. You uh, talk about Glen Torn, I want to go now further down the table <coughs> and obviously to the whole uh, shenanigans I would call and the, the sadness uh, regarding Portadown because Portadown always had a soft spot for me anyway because uh, under Ronnie McFall for so many years <coughs> they were always very good to me in media terms for years and years and always had a soft spot after the Gannon towards Portadown. It's sad to see them in the position where they are. Vinnie Arkins is there now. They've gone through the mill. Pat McGibbon came in, he tried to do his best, he could take no more, he stepped aside. It's a mess for them, but Liam, it was also a mess for the fact that, uh, why was it not sorted out a lot sooner before, you know, even before a ball was kicked in anger when they knew there was issues and just make a decision, it mightn't be the right decision, okay, hopefully it would be, but make the decision yeah. and get it done and dusted with. I couldn't agree more, Adrian. And you're quite right in what you say, I'm always well treated when I go to Portadown to Shamrock <coughs> Park 
the kettle's always on the boil. You know me, I love a cup of <laughs> And the kettle's always on the boil. Uh, a lot of good friends there, but somebody up there was not doing their job properly. Uh, obviously, we'll not name names. I'm not even sure. I couldn't name names. Yeah. But I would have to say that uh, I'm extremely disappointed. Somebody in there in charge of player registrations and so on and that administration side of the club got it badly wrong. Got the club's name tarnished. They were deducted 12 points at the outset of the league. They never really have recovered from that. Ronnie McFall stepped aside, long-time manager, long-time successful manager, good guy, I like Ronnie. Big Pat come in, a fella that I love to bits, Pat McGibbon. But he must have felt he had reversed over every black cat in County Armagh because he couldn't have had any more bad luck than what he had. Players decided to go, he couldn't sign players, there was an embargo put on signing players. All types of things thrown in his face, all the obstacles that could be put in his way was put in his way. And he just had had enough, uh, and I, I, I honestly did not, uh, just did not envy anybody else coming in. Vinnie Arkins has come in, mm -hmm. and he's got some semblance of order going again. But you know, I also, I, I just, it's not fair to the fans at Portadown because, mm -hmm. you know, they're loyal as well. They've been attending the club. They don't know what goes on behind boardroom doors, and they're extremely upset. I can understand why. Uh, they need to get their house in order. Uh, and get back to the type of club that we know they are. We need a strong port of down as well. Can they recover? I think they'll be relegated, Adrian, because uh, I think that the 12 point differential uh, is a big ask. Mind you, Carrick Rangers are not doing an awful lot to, mm -hmm. to get away from that trouble. They've been handed, I think, it's like looking a gift horse in the mouth, a 12 point benefit before the, a ball's even kicked. And they haven't taken advantage of that. They've been going through the mill as well. So they're down there and perhaps Portadown might, if they're lucky, get out of the instant relegation, automatic relegation slot uh, and maybe put Carrick down there. But it's between Portadown and Carrick, I think, who'll go down. You've excluded the likes of Balnamallard. Do you think that they're OK? They're steady. You know, they have come through, actually, and they've established themselves very well. And, of course, we always talk about the welcome you get in Balnamallard. I think Balna Mallard in the Irish League was a breath of fresh air. It got us away from this whole city thing and maybe even just down the motorway, down the M1. I'm delighted to see Balna Mallard in the Irish League and still going and thriving. I've never seen Swiss rolls like it that they have at Balna Mallard. <laughs> they give you a slice of Swiss rolls. It's all, roll. it's, it's it's all cups of tea and, ro and sausage rolls for you, isn't it? Swiss rolls. I love my grub and I love my, and I love my coppers. And they give you a slice of Swiss roll, it's like a tyre up a lawnmower. And, and, and honest to God, it's great. And they're great people down there. And I agree with you totally. And they have the best playing surface in the Irish League, without a doubt. Fantastic. Good people. Whitey Anderson, long-time manager, is gone. Gavin Dykes has come in. If he start, I uh, didn't know if he would even last. He's sort of stabilised a wee bit. What I will say in Balna Mallard's favour, and the reason I think they'll stay up is because of Portadown's situation and of Carrick's poor start to the season. I think not necessarily Balna Mallard's good form, I think the poor form of the two clubs below them uh, and, the, and Portadown being in all sorts of trouble and Carrick not taking advantage of it, I think that'll be Balna Mallard's saving grace. So you've answered one part of uh, the question today about who you think will struggle at the bottom, obviously, for relegation. <coughs> we go to the top and it's uh, same old, same old here, you know, Crusaders, you know, when you can't fault them, you know, like their, their quality side, there's some great players, you know what I mean, but they're players that have bought in to the whole ethos of Stephen Baxter and Crusaders, yeah. they're going to be very hard to stop again this season. The continuity is there, Adrian, you've nailed it again. Stephen Baxter's been there now 11 years, I think. Uh, he has slowly but surely resurrected that club. They've done it in stages. Uh, they've taken them from one phase to the other. They're now at the top level uh, and they're now uh, one in the league and they're the team to beat. They have the best squad in the league. Uh, they probably have the best team in the league. I always think the league table never lies. Uh, and, and yes, they're the team to beat and that would be a treble. My goodness, that would be real history in the mm -hmm. making if they won three in the row. Linfield Who's the greatest threat? Is it Linfield or is it is it Cliftonville or have they gone no. back? Is it Glenavon, Ballymena? No. You know, where's their biggest threat? Uh, Linfield. Okay. Linfield's the biggest threat. And again, uh, I did a match recently there, uh, Linfield down at Corey, and I was covering it for BBC. And it was the first time really I'd heard a few people having a go at David Healy, the manager, who's literally only through the door, what, 12 months ago or whatever. Uh, and I felt sorry for David Healy as well because... 
you know, he's had to come in and take over a team that's been stuttering. It's not to say that it was, that it was on, uh, you know, all four wheels were on the ground when he took over. There was a couple off the ground, and, and mm -hmm. he's trying to get the ship stabilised. He was brought in Roy Carroll, obviously a uh, very experienced international, and Sammy Klingon. Uh, they wouldn't have been cheap to bring in either, Adrian. So player budget-wise, he's probably exhausted that budget. But I think that, that David Healy, I don't think, I, I know if they give him the chance, he will certainly deliver. They just have to give him the time. And, and let's not forget that, you know, it's 26 years since Liverpool won the English League. And we all, we all know how big a club Liverpool are and how popular they are, particularly in Northern Ireland. They, 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 so many Liverpool fans. It's 26 years That's since Liverpool believe, won the league. That's 26 years. That's four or five years since... What was since the price of a Swiss roll then? Uh, oh, for goodness <laughs> I think we get two for the price of one. <laughs> but, and Man United, four or five years since Man United won the league. So, Linfield Well, there's fans, nothing wrong with that. Linfield fans <laughs> have to be realistic. Isn't that Liverpool stat? Isn't that an incredible that's a, stat? That's amazing, really. You know, and, and people have got to realise that Linfield, it'll take time. He's not just going to come in in 12 months. I think last year he, he won two trophies at Linfield, second in the league, and to many that was considered a failure. Uh, and people have just got to be realistic. You've no divine right anymore to go to the mm. likes of Balamina and Coleraine and Glenavon and these places and beat them. Uh, you know, So they've got to accept reality and take a reality check. They've no divine right to win the league every year. I think keep faith with David Healy and I think he'll deliver. So you're going for Crusaders again, Linfield as their main threat, so let's put our crystal ball on again and uh, let's look into it. Uh, the Cup, the Irish Cup obviously is the Blue Ribbon event and people people love the Cup, the whole atmosphere and there's other ancillary competitions but basically it's the Premiership and uh, the Irish Cup. Yeah. Who would you fancy as a team that might, that might make a bit of an impression in the Irish Cup this season? I coming? think that uh, Again, there's your Crusaders have not been uh, the dominant force in the Cups that they, they are in the league. The big one is the league, of course, but you're right, the Irish Cup's the next biggest prize up there. I think you could look at the outsiders maybe being Balamina United, Coleraine, Glenavon, and perhaps Cliftonville. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think that you don't necessarily, because the league is a marathon, Adrian, we all know that. The Cup is a sprint. It's over a few games, four or five games. I won two Irish Cups and I think we played five games to one each of them. Uh, so it's not like a league... Do you know what every time we market. do this, you talk about you winning the Irish Cup? You just keep telling people all the time as to how good you were, you know? I have seen you, you were deceptively <laughs> slow when you were dirty. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> oh, I wasn't dirty. No, no, no. I just didn't take any prisoners. That I wouldn't even get down the tunnel nowadays. <laughs> the game has changed that much. But I'm being serious because... I'm only using my own experience here. In 75, we won the Irish Cup with a great team at Corey. Great team, best team ever played on. Uh, we won it again in 77 in a poor team. Uh -huh. uh, yet we won the Irish Cup and we beat Linfield 4 1. Need a wee bit of and luck a, along the way with a cup competition. Correct. And you don't necessarily have to be the best team in the league to win a cup. Mm -hmm. It's on the day, cups are knocked out. Uh, if you play well on that day and perhaps the favourites you're up against, don't have a great day, you can beat them. And I remember us going to play Linfield in the final in 77, beat them 4-1. And we were massive underdogs. And just when we're on the subject of me, I scored that day as well. But anyhow, we'll move on quickly. But, <laughs> but uh, that just let, that was proof to me, and I'm never embarrassed to say it, that Korean team that beat Linfield in 77, 4-1, was probably one of the worst Korean teams I ever played on. Uh -huh. uh, yet they won the uh, they won the cup final that day for one. So, if we're talking about the cup, there's no reason why Glenavon can't win it. There's no reason why Cliftonville can't win it. Balamina, Coleraine, those type of teams I think can win the cup. I wouldn't go any further than that. I would say then, if you're looking beyond those four, you're looking at either Crusaders or Linfield. Uh, but if we're looking for a good bet in McLean's, Look at Glenavon, Ballymena, or Coleraine, or Cliftonville. Okay. We're nearly finished, Liam, too. And I want to say to you, too, that uh, we've covered a lot of games this uh, season already for yeah. uh, Radio Ulster. I've certainly have enjoyed them. Uh, I think the standard is well worth watching. I've watched Premiership uh, in England, 
and uh, some of the matches have been downright boring. They've been uh, a <coughs> com com complete mess. And yet I've gone to the Irish League, and I have to say, hand and heart, I haven't seen a bad match all season. Neither have I. They had a game there the other Saturday, and you know this was the best game. The palms of my hands were sweating on the result at the finish. Uh, because, and I don't know how the two managers felt. Yet I could go home and sit down maybe in the Monday night for the Monday night soccer game, get a big mug of tea, shut the door, tell everybody I'm not there, leave me alone to watch it, and within 10 minutes I'm changing channels. I find it boring. They're overpaid. Uh, prima donnas now in English league football. I think it's a false game now in England. Um, and I get so browned off starting to watch it. And I think, get along to your Saturday games in Irish league. There's a lot more value for money for a tenner. A tenner to get in. Get along to your Irish League games, enjoy it, support your local teams, support your local clubs and uh, and watch it uh, improve. You're right, I think the standard's good. The crowds are starting to come back. The stats show that, that attendances are on the up. So I think you get really good value for money. You get honest to goodness football, a bit of cut and thrust. Uh, you're not allowed to maybe tackle as hard as you used to be, but I think it's still a good product and I thoroughly enjoy it. It's getting colder too, so giving you a wee hat there, you can put it on to keep yourself warm. That we, uh, you know, get you know get the hurt of your eyes and you're watching the matches. Well, well whenever too. you and me's out golfing, you know, I might put it on, particularly in this uh, time of the year, Adrian. That's but it. Uh, maybe it just goes without saying. It's a great time to wash all the McLeans, uh, punters, uh, a happy Christmas and a healthy one. Okay, Liam. God bless you as usual. Thank you.